when you hear the beginning of it, you're not sure whether it's going to be Queen and David Bowie or <laughs> Vanilla Ice. It's like, okay, yeah. which one are we going to get? And then you hear a word to your mother. It's like, okay, it's Vanilla Ice. Yeah, I would have demanded the masters instead of, you know what? You can keep right. the money, you little creep, because you're never going to make another dime again. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I want the masters of that song so I can burn them. You just, you just, yeah. The, the cojones on that guy. My gosh. Okay. So my list, I'm going to go one to 10. Um, my favorite all time is somebody to, to love. Uh, when I am in the car, I am singing the hell out of this song. And I sound great. I sound great in the shower too. <laughs> Never, nobody's ever going to hear it, but I imagine like there was a choir behind me and and I just, I just think I, 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 I love singing that. So that's my number one. Um, Bohemian Rhapsody is number two. Another one, Bites of Dust, number three. We're the Champions, number four. Uh, Under Pressure, number five. Killer Queen, number six. We Will Rock You, number seven. Um, Fat Bottom Girls. That's just a fun song. Neither yeah, that's probably that. why we should have done fifteen. Because yeah. Mean, they they did some pretty cool little little rock numbers that were just kind of silly, but you know, he, I mean, they they beat uh, Sir Mix a lot to the punch by like fifteen years. <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't sample Fat Bottom Girls in that one. God, <laughs> and, the, and the and the song Bicycle was hilarious too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Actually, I was going to ask that. What's your least favorite Queen song? Um, mine is either Bicycle or You're My Best Friend. <laughs> yeah. Really? You're My Best Friend. Oh, that's such a good John Deacon song. Really? Um, here's the thing. I don't know who, what commercial it was used for. But it was used in some kind of commercial, and it just... It, it just like got overplayed and, <laughs> I, and and that just made me hate it to death. So what's um what's uh what what's what's your favorite uh, least favorite uh, Queen song? I, honestly, I, I don't even know. So I'm I just default to Brad. I don't think I have a least favorite one. Yeah, I mean, even the ones I think stink are... I mean, like, okay, I don't really like the song Bicycle. I'd never sing it to myself or anything in the shower. But it comes on the radio. I'm not turning the, ch- turning the channel yeah. either. I yeah. Mean, <laughs> Bi- Bicycle gets on my nerves. So, yeah, I mean, like, I, like I said, it's, 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 it's hard to find a, a Queen song that you might not like, but those, those are just two that get on my nerves for some reason. Well, yeah, because it's like, yeah, I kind of get what he's singing about. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah... I, it's one of those, I'm kind of coming out in a song, but not really. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know you like guys and chicks. We're cool. Um, yeah, I mean, You're My Best Friend is probably the, my least favorite song, though, when it comes on, just because it, I, I just find it so sappy. Yeah, I'm, I'm a terrible person, and I don't like friendship. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then the only other one I'll mention is um, Stone Cold Crazy and really... Just because Metallica covered it. That's the only reason I know it exists. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> basically, yeah. Uh, are you saying that because you like the Metallica version better? I... Uh, Queen version is pretty good, too. But I just... Uh, I just it's, it's one of my favorite Metallica songs. So that's why I'm a... Uh, that's why I'm uh, throwing it in there. Yeah, because I don't know. I don't know if you mentioned that during uh, the, our Metallica show. I don't think so, but there were so many, there were so many Metallica songs. Yeah, well, I think in our first show we might have mentioned it, and then we lost the tape to it because we mentioned some of the Metallica covers a little bit more in that. Yeah, but yeah, um, I only heard of this, heard uh, Stone Cold Crazy initially from Metallica. Really liked the Metallica version, and then when I heard the Queen version, I was like, "Yeah, I like the Metallica version better." That's just how that went. Yep. Yeah. So personal preference. I'm a bad person. So. All right. Oh, I mean, you're you've been wrong for the last 29 minutes. So you know what's let's. let's what? Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> there you go. That, that was a the theme. That was a the theme today. Yeah, Brad's wrong. Yeah, Brad I know. Wrong. Yeah. 
Kareem Hunt, this. All right, yeah, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Should have just stayed in bed Sunday. All right, yeah. fine. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. You're becoming. Uh, you're like my uh, the, the 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 music the podcast music experts. So next time there's a uh, there's a music subject, uh, I'll uh, I'll hit you guys up. Great. All right. Yeah. Thanks for keeping this in mind. All right. I had a lot of fun. Yeah. So thank you, Joe. Brad, thanks, Brad Reyes, Kyle Senra. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. All right, now for our weekly segment covering football, the weekend in football, and whatever else is going on. Uh, actually, today it's uh, we're we're down, coach. So coach is coach is on the disabled list. So uh, it's just uh, me and Mark. How you doing, sir? Good. How are you doing? He's on he's on IR, I guess. So. He is on he is on the, he's on the podcast injured reserve list. Podcast uh, IR. Uh, upper body injury. Uh, <laughs> Return is questionable. Uh, so, okay, so let, let's let's go in chronological order. The Steeler game. Did you go to the, that game? Yeah, I was at the game. That was yeah, a, that um, was a fun game. It was, was a fun game. It was a nice, easy, you know, game where you don't have to worry about whoa whether whether the team is going to win or lose or not. But oh my! Yeah. What? After the first five minutes, yes, it was. It was like, oh touchdown! Oh touchdown! Oh touchdown! Oh touchdown! <laughs> They they Carolina started the game going through the defense like a hot knife through butter, and then after that it's like they woke up. Yeah, it's almost like they just had a really good first drive planned out. I think Carolina and whatever they were doing, the Steelers adjusted and it it worked immediately, and they didn't really do much again the rest of the game. You know, it was. It was, I pretty, it was pretty impressive. How much of that is because it was a Thursday night, and you know they're only given you know they only have a few days to to get ready, and they really can't prepare anything or add anything. So it's like, well, whatever we're doing, we're just going to do, and let's see what happens. Yeah, it's almost like when you go into like a preseason game, and you just don't have like they always say it's not the full fledged defense. They're just going pretty much doing manning up one-on-one and kind of right. going, instead of having all these complicated schemes and everything. Right. But the, uh, the second Steelers touchdown, the, the defensive touchdown, I don't know what Cam Newton was thinking. Just, just basically he just handed the Steelers a touchdown. That was the easiest interception pick six I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. I, I mean, he may have a, a real quick for a split second saw, thought he had someone he could dish it to, but then, you know, when he's getting about to get take a safety and spun around, I guess you know lost control of the ball and it kind of went up like a mini punt and just landed right where like Vince Williams could get it. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing though. I was like, oh man, that's like one of those like, oh, shouldn't have done that. <laughs> yeah, but great play by you know Watt and the rest of the defense. I mean, get, almost getting the safety anyway. That's two weeks and uh, I guess two out of the last three weeks, I almost had a safety. Yeah, man. Cam Newton is such a big dude. I mean, they say that about Ben Roethlisberger, but man, that, that guy is just, it's just hard to bring him down. Holy cow. Yeah. And they still managed to get, he did get away. And they did. The they sacked him a bunch of times. So yeah. Yeah. He's pretty, pretty elusive. I like the way they played him though. It sounded like from what I was listening to post game stuff that, uh, with that pass run option thing, they pretty much focused on, they let the running back have some of those yards, especially early on. And uh, just focused on not letting cam beat them with his legs. Yeah. And it, I guess that worked. I guess that worked. Yeah. Yeah. And then Ben perfect. I mean, literally <laughs> perfect. That was, uh, that's amazing. And, you know, yeah, that was about as good as I've, I could see him play. I mean, I think what three incompletions or something. And I think at least I think so. one had, or two had, of them were probably like could have been caught. I know the one in the end zone. I think wasn't five easy touchdowns catch, but... and three incompletions. So, yeah, yeah, more touchdowns and incompletions. But, you know, I mean, it's just such a – I don't remember 2016. I don't remember how that started. But I know last year it was almost the exact same start. They start out slow yeah. and then they figure it out. And it's exactly what happened this year. So, I mean, you okay, people trash Tomlin when when the team does poorly. Well, then you got to give him credit when the team does well. 
and th- they figure it out. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how. I mean, the, the slow starts, and, and especially at certain games where they don't seem ready. Mostly the playoff games last uh, last year. You know, you can give the coach some crap for that, but like you said, God give him credit, especially with all the outside things going on with this team that he kept them together and you know this whole bell thing might actually be something that's unifying them <laughs> instead of dividing them and it might have kept kept them together through everything but yeah you got to give uh tomlin as and the each uh the offensive and defensive coordinator some some credit it seems like uh fickner has a pretty good pulse on the offense here whether it's letting ben do his thing or knowing what will work in the red zone because the red zone percentage is just insane. Exactly. Uh, right. That was the huge criticism of Todd Haley uh, was they sucked in the red zone because Todd Haley had to become, it had to become the, uh, it, it had to become Todd Haley, uh, Todd Haley and the Pittsburgh Steelers it had to become the Todd Haley show. Let's show yeah. how smart he is instead of, you know, worrying about, scoring touchdowns it's let's do the the perfect play where we should we we throw a bubble screen or or (laughs) whatever or you know whatever it's 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 third and inches so let's let's toss a uh let's do a a, 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 a toss yeah five yards back and hope the running back makes it like like oh god so yeah i mean that's that's a huge improvement from this year and you know as as we could see Everybody hates Todd Haley. I think yeah. I think we could all establish yeah, that. Yeah, especially after the Browns' performance today, and he's gone. Yeah, yeah. even Cleveland's like, oh, I'm glad he's gone now. Look at yeah, yeah. I was just uh, I was just talking to to a, a Cleveland Browns friend and said, you know, he's so excited about the team now. He's like, he's like, wow, look what happens when Hugh Jackson and Todd Haley are gone. And he's like, yeah, <laughs> maybe they were the problem. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, uh, you gotta give gotta give Finger a lot of credit too. But you mentioned Le'Veon Bell, and uh, yeah. the news is, and God, I hope this is the last time we talk about this idiot. It might be if if the it might be. <laughs> the, the news is he's not showing up on Tuesday, and that's the absolute deadline. That means he's done for the year, and he's throwing away fourteen and a <laughs> half million dollars. Fourteen and a half million guaranteed wow. once he signed it this year. So wow! Even Just, if he got hurt the first week, he would have had his fourteen million. So that's insane. Here's what I want to know. <laughs> we had our little fun last week. Uh, I on our on uh, the 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 donut bag uh, Twitter page. I, th- I forgot what day it was, but basically. We oh, yeah, the love listed, love. yeah, we did a little thing of like all the places he was at. He went to Primanti's, he went to a jet ski place, <laughs> he went great. to I mean, all, the, all these places. He shows up in Pittsburgh. I mean, it was kind of documented that he was in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Why do you come to Pittsburgh if you're if not, yeah. not going to show up to, to the team? I don't know. I was hoping that there would be some like amusing tweets from him that he was like sitting in the uh, upper stands during the game on Thursday, which would have been pretty funny. <laughs> Been like the Where's Waldo of Le'Veon Bell in the, in the stadium, but yeah, I don't know why you waste your time coming here if you're not ready to strap it up and and prove your worth. Like he's gonna have no nothing backing him up this year that he is worth the money that he wants. There is speculation that what happened to Des Bryant, yeah, is what what made him change his mind or whatever. <clears throat> I. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it is a valid concern. Des Bryant, uh, you know, just just signed. He was basically not doing anything. Um, and then he just signed with the Saints this week. And in practice, he blows out his Achilles. Might have um, ended his career. So Absolutely. maybe Le'Veon Bell saw that and said, oh, I'm not even I'm not even risking a practice. Yeah. I mean, that's possible. Des is a few years older, I think, right? He's probably like in his low 30s. I think Des is, yeah, Des is, Des is a little bit older, but... I yeah. mean, if you're sitting around and then all of a sudden you're... I mean, that's why you need the training camp and everything. And exactly. Everything. It's a risk. It's a risk. I I, I, I believe he'll... Uh, I, I think he'll get hurt next uh, next year in training camp. Probably. I mean, he's uh, already had a, a, a kind of an injured 
plagued a career for the most part. Well, so 